Hello out there to my YouTube videos and video watchers and followers. Uh, I'm going to try and get this in one shot and do it real quickly in about 10 minutes or so. I've tried a couple times already and failed, but here we go. My name's Frank. You probably already know that. If, if not, now you do. Uh, today's video is why I care about organic. Um, before I get into that, I'm just going to briefly talk about my sherba mate again like I usually do in my videos. Uh, today I'm drinking an organic mate from Paraguay called Federico. Uh, it's pretty bitter. It's pretty good cold. That's the way I usually like to drink the mates from Paraguay because I believe they usually do drink it cold. It's called terere when it's drink cold. This one isn't my favorite, but it's good. It's very bitter. If you like very bitter mates or sherbas, um, I recommend you give it a try if you could find it. Um, now, I also promote the Circle of Drink brand and community online. Um, if you want to give their mate a try, um, they're also now selling tea bags of mate so you don't have to go through the whole trouble of getting a, a mate or a gourd and a bombisha or a filtered straw and you know using a thermos and all that you could just make it like tea or similar to tea you don't want to use boiling hot water um, but uh, other than that it's similar to making regular tea with tea bags of mate sherba mate instead of tea so go check out circleofdrink.com you could use the code FRANK1 to get 10% off your order. So now with that whole introduction finished off, um, why care about organic? Well, organic as we use it today, the word organic in reference to food and other products like cotton, like this t-shirt is an organic cotton t-shirt, means generally, as we most people understand it, made or grown without chemicals, um, whether that's fertilizers, pesticides, um, that type of stuff. It's made with natural methods, you know, natural fertilizers, compost, uh, no antibiotics and, you know, that type of stuff. Um, now, why is that supposedly better than the alternative? And what is the alternative? Today, the alternative generally, and especially more and more, and some would argue less and less, uh, is genetically modified, um, or GM, or GMO foods and plants. And even animals like salmon, they're genetically modified. Now, genetically modified does not mean simply selective breeding like humans have been practicing for hundreds or even thousands of years uh, with both animals and plants but genetically modified means actually modified in a science lab where they take the genes from one plant or animal and plug those genes into the DNA of another plant or animal in order to get a particular trait such as pest resistance or grow faster growing or resistance to uh, natural decay on the shelf so that it lasts longer has a longer shelf life all those types of things uh, and there's even some s cosmetic ones to change the flavor or you know make a pineapple have a rosy flesh and that's you know one type of genetic modification or there's a type of rice now called yellow rice that has high in vitamin A content and whatnot, supposed to be better for third world countries. And, you know, there's not a lot of long term testing going on with these genetically modified crops. Um, and it's hard to tell whether or not these genetically modified crops are actually better for not just people, but animals and the environment. And in fact, there's some non-empirical evidence, some, um, you know, 
things that people have observed but not necessarily done scientific studies on that suggest that genetically modified things are bad and um, such things are uh, there's a co colony collapse disorder with honeybees uh, beekeepers have uh, observed and eliminate the eliminated the possibility of things like parasites in bees being the cause of this colony collapse disorder uh, or bacterial infections or other things like that causing this colony collapse disorder in bees which is you know colonies or hives of thousands of bees suddenly disappear from the hive one day and never return and so rather than being thousands of bees there's maybe a couple of dozen or even a handful of bees left in the hive uh, and so the colony collapses and they lose their bees and they have to start over and it costs money and it kills off bees and it's just harmful overall to the whole situation um, monarch butterflies uh, the caterpillars have died off also there's been reports of that happening with when they feed off of genetically modified crops um, there was a re there were some reports a few years ago of genetically modified cotton in India. There were cattle eating the stems from left over f after the co cotton harvest. They got real ill and died. Now I don't know for for certain that that was because of the genetically modified cotton, but it's a possibility. So there's all these things going on in the world that, in my mind, serve like a canary in the mine sort of thing, where you know if you don't know about canary in the mine canaries you know the bird they would have canaries in mines you know coal mines or what have you that if the canary died that meant there was a particular high particularly high concentration of uh, harmful gases in the air of, of the mines that killed the canary and that also meant that uh, the concentration could get high enough to kill the miners themselves or cause an explosion in the mine and therefore kill a bunch of miners and you know all that type of stuff so to me the evidence that isn't scientific per se but is still observable like the loss of bees and butterflies and possibly cattle in India with GM cotton and whatnot those things are just some of the evidence that suggests that GM genetically modified not, might not be good and that we need to focus on going back to the organic type of foods and other products like cotton. Uh, besides that type of evidence, you know, the increase in cancer and diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, fatigue, all sorts of diseases and problems you know hormone levels decreasing and going all out of whack in people you know kids having disorders you know increases in um, birth defects or um, autism and that that sort of thing happening in, in kids I think in, in large part could be very well attributed it attributed to genetically modified crops and processed foods and when you combine those two things processed foods from genetically modified crops then it's particularly bad uh, I've seen you know examples of this in friends and family you know I have friends and family who have had cancer and diabetes and high blood pressure and mood problems um, you know um, my, my brothers or sisters or you know dad mom uh, grandmother, grandparents, aunts, uncles. I have, you know, I, I have innumerable family members with health problems that could very well stem from not just an unhealthy lifestyle, which I'm sure could be part of it, you know, they're not getting enough exercise and uh, that type of thing, but, you know, they're, some of them are older, some of them are younger, like my, you know, my brother is younger than me and uh, he has issues with high blood pressure and and stuff like that so and he other than that he's pretty healthy he's an active kid and he still has high blood pressure um, so yeah it's just we need to stop and examine uh, 
not so much necessarily why organic might be better. It's not just a yuppie thing where, yes, it's more expensive, so it's better for you, you know, that type of thing. But what is the alternative, and could the alternative possibility of genetic modification, pesticide-laden, fertilize, chemical fertilizers, could all that combination, along with processed foods derived from those, high fructose corn syrup, refined sugar, uh, you know, uh, corn and canola oil, soy, soy oil from genetically modified crops, could those things be contributing to the overall demise, uh, unhealthiness, and um, just problems in general throughout mankind and modern earth and politics and uh, you know hate between different groups of people and the, the the ongoing struggle throughout the world between different groups of people and you know class struggles and uh, problems of racism and um, just a whole bunch, a slew of stuff. Uh, I I think we need to, to stop and take a look at it. And you know, personally, I've I've changed myself, and that's all you really can do. This is just a suggestion for all of you watching, if you're not already doing it, to try and buy more organic, less traditional non-organic foods, less fewer processed foods, uh, and, you know, exercise more, maybe integrate things like sherba mate into your diet, or teas, tulsi tea, T-U-L-S-I from India, that's a good one to try, um, ginger tea, organic of course, ginger, organic tulsi, organic sherba mate, um, and see how your lifestyle changes, how your li how your health changes. It, it certainly has helped me uh, over the last couple of years. Um, whenever I go back and I start eating processed foods and stuff again, I just don't feel right. And it might be, in some respect, due to you know my own mindset. You know that I think maybe this stuff isn't good for me, so it's not. That is po quite possibly some of it. But it cannot, and I truly believe that it is not all of it. Um, you know, you could think it's good for you, but it's not. I mean, it's it's still very well a possibility, you know. Uh, or you could not have any idea about something and it's bad for you. You could have uh, an allergic reaction to something that you've never tried before and have no no opinion of, and you have an allergic reaction to it. Or, you know, there are just some plants that are poisonous and there's not much you could do about it, you know. They're just poisonous if you eat them or, they, you know, they touch your skin, you get a rash, whatever. That's just how things are. And that's what I truly believe is the case with organic versus GMO uh, foods and other products like cotton. So just try to be aware of it and if you possibly can, try to buy and maybe even grow your own organic foods um, and see what that does for you in the course of over the course of a couple months um, just a suggestion you know um, can't make you do it but you know if you're having health issues or you know family that is you know give it a try yourself and see maybe it'll make a difference in your life um, I feel as though it's really made a difference in mine and I'm not done, you know. I'm still alive. I'm still living. So I'm making more and more changes every day, um, and everybody should really. Um, just that's all we can do in our lives is try to do the best we can and help each other out, you know. And I'm, that's what I'm trying to do here is help help you all out and help myself out. So I'm gonna end it on that note. Almost 15 minutes here. Uh, hope everyone has a great day, great week, great month, great year, what have you. Just just have a great time in your life from moment to moment. So on that note, salute, peace, love, rock and roll. Frank out. <laughs>